All right, we are continuing our notes on rational functions. Um, I sent this this page here. Um, we I made a video for that. Number two, I had a video before, so um, hopefully you already watched that. I went ahead and filled it in for the notes just now, but there I made a video a few years ago on that one. Um, on this one. What we're going to look at for these two is we're going to we're going to take advantage of Desmos. So what I have done, they ask us to graph f and g, and so f you'll notice is a line, and g is a line plus this one over x minus three. Um, so when we think, but we should know what this looks like. That that's it goes through. It has a y-intercept of negative five and a slope of two. This one though, as as we look at as we look at g of x. What starts happening, what well, we have, we have, well, as x, let me say it this way, as x starts getting really, really, really big, then I have 1 divided by something really, really big, okay? If I have the number 1 and I divide it by something really, really big, this ends up getting, it, it goes, it gets really, really, it goes, it goes to 0, which is why I sound like I said goats, sorry, whatever, um, one divided by something really, really big. Think of it, I have one dollar that I'm going to share with the whole world. How much do you get? Well, it's not technically zero, but it might as well be. Okay, so this gets really, really small. This goes, um, this goes to zero. So what happens here is this function is going to do some weird stuff when it's near x equals three. Um, like if I plug in, uh, okay, say I have g of... 2 would be equal to 2 times 2 minus 5 um, plus 1 over 2 minus 3. This would be equal to 4 minus 5 is negative 1 plus another negative 1. This is negative 2. Noticing here that f of 2 is equal to four, negative 1. Okay, so those are a little bit apart from each other. Um, but as... Um, as we get farther and farther out, both in the negative and the positive direction, as we have, so something, one divided by something really, really negative and big is something really, really negative but small. So um, it approaches zero from the other side. Um, anyway, so what's gonna happen, this term goes to zero as x gets really, really big or really, really small. So then this graph here will look like that line. Let me see if this will make sense to you. Oh no, I typed it in. It disappeared. It was there, I promise. Um, well, okay. It was 2x plus 5, no, minus 5. And then it was 2x, I had it, I really did. I didn't want to have to take the time to do this. Plus 1 over x plus 3, was it? Okay, so... Oh, it was minus three. Okay, I really, I was prepared. I blame technology. It's just, it's out to get me. Okay, <laughs> sorry. That's, um, and then notice I can also type in x equals three into my graph here. Um, I can even clean this up and say, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. If I hit that little um, toolbar, I can change that to a dotted line and change this to a dotted line. Okay, so now notice what's happening here. I've got the y equals 2x minus 5 as that red dotted line. My new rational function is the blue that's kind of approaching both of those asymptotes. Um, well, the, my other asymptote was x equals 3, and you can see how that graph lives, lives there with them um, in, inside that. Um, what we'll find is that they either, they kind of stay in opposite, they're not exactly quadrants, but they'll be across from each other. So if we'd had, um, we could have, be in the, the top, uh, you, know, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, we could be, well, we tend to be across from each other. Okay, um, so coming back here, describe what we see. It's approaching, especially as, when we get close in here, it, the blue is not quite the red line, but as we go farther and farther out, Um, I mean, even at this 12.5 or 13 or whatever, we're pretty close to that line. So what it starts to do is it starts to approach that, that line. It's, um, that becomes a, um, a slant asymptote. Um, so let's continue on. Um, so describe what we see. We see the graph approaching 
um, that that slant asymptote. So then they say write it in the form where they're both polynomials because typically, and here's what happens, we don't give it to you like this, we give it to you um, in the form of a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Well, okay, so let's look at that. Let's see if we can come up with, with the new, um, here's what I see. I see a 2x minus 5 that has a denominator of 1. And, um, and then I see a plus 1 over x minus 3. This guy also needs a denominator of x minus 3, so I have to multiply x minus 3 uh, on top and bottom. And so this right here is now morphing into that. And then what I get is I have a 2x squared. I have a minus 6x and a minus 5, so that's minus 11x. And then I have a plus 15, and then I have a plus 1 from the other part that's all over x minus 3. So when they say write it in that form, g of x would be equal to 2x squared minus 11x plus 16 over x minus 3. Okay, and so notice on this one, it's top heavy. The, the degree of the top is bigger than the, the degree of the bottom. Um, and so the, the top heavy becomes... My brain just stopped. Top heavy gives you a slant asymptote if it's only a difference of one degree. Um, and the way that we would find it, if we had started here and we want to go back to the original, we can do synthetic division. So 2, negative 11, 16, and we're going to divide by the 3 outside. This gives me, um, am I doing this correctly? Yes, I think so. That's a negative 15. This gives me that positive 1. So sure enough, it's 2x minus 5 plus 1 over x minus 3. And that had better look familiar. And sure enough, this matches this. And we so we can get back to this idea um, using synthetic division. When we do, the advantage to this is... Um, we can see this is now our slant asymptote because this part right here goes to zero. So that uh, as we get farther and farther out, um, we get closer and closer to the, that. That matters less and less. Um, okay, let me let me see what else we need to fill out in this chart down below. Um, so a slant or a parabolic which I'm going to talk about. It might not be till the next video. But basically what happens with a, a slant asymptote is where the degree on the top is one degree higher than the degree on the bottom. Parabolic is when it's a difference of two. Um, so I think I'm going to make another video for that because I'm going to set up Desmos and not have you type, watch me type it in. This happens when it's um, bot, or top heavy. And what we want to do is we want to divide. Okay, um, the x-intercept, let me finish filling out this chart here. The x-intercept is when y equals 0. So, um, so when y equals 0, well, if I have f of x is equal to something over something, what can happen, the only way for y to equal 0 is if the numerator equals 0. So what we'll have for the, for the x-intercept, you might not have to write that down, but um, we'll say set the numerator equal to 0. Now it could happen that I have something like y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. I can set 1 equal to 0, but it's false. 1 does not equal 0. There are no x-intercepts. Um, it could be, if I, if I had something like, um, if I had something like x plus 1, well now when I set the numerator equal to 0, I get that x is equal to, this would have a negative 1 comma 0 would be that x-intercept. Okay, um, so the y-intercept, that's when x equals 0. And with a lot of these, um, if they're written in the form, uh, well, just x minus 5 over x plus 1, I don't really care. When I set 0, when I set x equal to 0, that's, that's gone, and all I need to do is look at the constants. So then that would be, it would have, when x is 0, our y value would be negative 5 in that particular case. Um, so... Uh, what do you want to say? Let x equals 0. And I'm going to write, look at the constants. Okay. Um, what else do we need to talk about? In behavior, with these, it's as x goes to infinity, what's y doing? As, and, and as x goes to negative infinity, what's y doing? So what we find is that either 
we could have a few different scenarios. If I have a if I have a horizontal asymptote, and what it's going to do is it's going to approach that horizontal asymptote as it goes to negative infinity going out. That looks terrible, but you know what I'm trying to do. It's approaching that asymptote. As it goes to positive infinity, it's also pro approaching that same asymptote. If I have either if I have a line with a hole. Now in this case, as x goes to infinity, y is going to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y is going to negative infinity. Um, you could also have something like um, a slant asymptote. And if we're doing something in here, down here, then what's this one doing? So here's the part that we look at. As x goes to infinity, what's y doing? Well, it's also going to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, what's y doing? It's going to negative infinity. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that got confusing. Um, okay, did I fill out this chart? Oh, what happens here is if it's bottom heavy, if I have something like y is equal to 1 over x minus 2, this is just the parent function shifted to the right, too. So shifting it to the right doesn't change your horizontal asymptote. So I would still just have an asymptote at y is equal to 0. If And likewise, if I have something like x plus 1 over x squared minus 4, I would have an asymptote of um, it's bottom heavy also, so it still has an asymptote of y equals 0. This one, you may notice, can factor. And so it's going to have asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. But those are vertical, not horizontal. Okay, I'm going to make one more video after I set up my calculator for number 4. So go look for that, and let me know if you have questions.